I genuinely don't think this is a good idea. I think this might be the biggest shock of the entire year. I did not see this coming. I I just cannot believe this. Yes, it did make me cry, but thankfully I had fairy smut <laughs> to, you know, distract me from the pain that I was in. This is one of the most beautiful books I have ever read in my entire life. Hi, hello, it's Jess. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to booktube knockout round four. You have seen the title, you've seen the thumbnail. This week I'm reading like Cindy. If you have not seen any of the other rounds of booktube knockout, I will leave them linked in the description. You can watch them in any order up until this point. Booktube Knockout is my own personal twist on a video concept that has been around for ages where we read like other booktubers. I took eight content creators and I looked at their taste in books and then I compared it to my own taste and I ranked them one through eight with one being what I think is the most similar to my taste and eight being what I think is the least similar to my taste. Today we are reading like Cindy who comes in at position number five. I love Cindy's content. She's one of the funniest content creators I've ever seen. She just is. She has great jokes. Her comedic timing is fantastic. She's so funny. She's so relatable. Every time I watch one of her videos, I'm sitting at my computer laughing like an idiot by myself. So I had to include her in this series. She is ranked number five for two reasons. The first is Cindy's taste is very eclectic. Sometimes Cindy reads a book and I'm like, oh, she is going to hate that book. And she'll literally give it five stars. And then sometimes she'll read a book that I'm like, oh, that's perfect for Cindy. She must love that book. And then she'll give it like a one or a two star rating. Because of Cindy's very eclectic taste, I don't necessarily know how my taste is going to align with hers. And the second reason that Cindy is ranked number five and not higher is because of what I'm going to be reading in this vlog. If you don't know, Cindy went viral for reading and then reviewing A Court of Thorns and Roses. And at this point, reading those books has become a part of Cindy's brand. And so I feel obligated <laughs> to read one of the books in that series. Now, I have the first two books in A Court of Thorns and Roses. Years, years ago, when the third book was coming out, there was a sale on the eBooks for the first two. I think like I got both of them for five bucks total. And so I was like, yeah, sure, like I'll get them. And I read A Court of Thorns and Roses and I did not like it. I gave it two stars and I thought it was boring. So I have since never read A Court of Mist and Fury because I don't think I'm gonna like it. I know the point of this series is to have fun and so I have tried my best to pick books that I genuinely think I'm gonna like even if they are a little bit risky for my own taste but this is one that like I don't think I'm gonna like it. I genuinely don't think this is a good idea, but I just don't feel like I have a choice. I will be reading A Court of Mist and Fury. That's actually gonna be the second book of this vlog. The first book of this vlog is going to be Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This book is a memoir. Chanel Miller was the victim in the Stanford sexual assault case, which was all over the news when it happened and when it was going to court and everything like that. At the time, 
Chanel Miller was known as Emily Doe and she did not release her identity even when they were going to court. But this is her story in her own words. This is one of Cindy's favorite books and I also think that Cindy is definitely one of the reasons that this book repeatedly makes the rounds on booktube. This book is a New York Times bestseller and so it's not that this book needed Cindy to promote it or anything like that. I definitely think Cindy played a role though in making this as popular as it is at least within the booktube community. This is obviously going to be a very heavy, heavy read. I fully expect to give this book five stars. <laughs> like genuinely I almost feel like I'm giving Cindy a freebie by reading this because I'm also reading A Court of Mist and Fury and I'm like listen I gotta read something that's a guaranteed five star because I'm about to just throw a fat two star <laughs> at Cindy so I'm like I gotta make up for it in some way. Due to the content of this book I think it's going to be a very very heavy read but I also think it's going to be very very moving. And then the final book for this vlog is going to be This Is How You Lose the Time War. This is a short little sci-fi novella. It follows two spies who are on opposite sides of a time war. Don't know what a time war is, but basically they strike up a correspondence and then they fall in love. I've heard that this book is super super weird and basically just like inexperience so I'm very much looking forward to it. I just want to know how I feel about this book. I definitely think I'm going to like it. I just am not sure how much I'm going to like it. This is the book that I'm most unsure on how it's going to go. So there you go. That's what I'm going to be reading this week. Welcome to the vlog and I'll talk to you later. Good morning. So it's the next day. I just want to do a quick reading update. So I actually started two books. <laughs> I'm a hundred pages into Know My Name and it is absolutely fantastic. I mean, I can't say that I'm enjoying the book. It is gut-wrenching. It is infuriating, but it is so well written. Chanel Miller is a fantastic author. Like honestly I hope she keeps writing. I would love to see what kind of fiction she could write because her writing is beautiful. However, I didn't want to fall asleep reading Know My Name because it's such a hard book to read. It is so heavy. Like I did not want to read that right before I fell asleep. So I also started A Court of Mist and Fury. So far it's fine. I think I'm like 150 pages into it. Like not really much has happened, honestly. I think it's just like a lot of setup. There's a lot of discussion of mental health in relation to what happened after the first book. I don't have any issues at the moment. We will see how things progress. Absolutely loving and hating know my name and A Court of Mist and Fury is fine so far. So yeah, I'm gonna go try to be productive today and then hopefully I can finish Know My Name today and I will have an update for you later.
Hello! It's two days later. Ignore my hair. It's still drying from my shower. I have two reading updates. I think this might be the biggest shock of the entire year. I did not see this coming. I, I just cannot believe this. Um, I liked A Court of Miss and Fury a lot. Like, I actually really like it. Like, I'm giving it four stars. I also finished Know My Name. That was also phenomenal, fantastic. I'm giving Know My Name five stars. Yes, it did make me cry, but thankfully I had fairy smut <laughs> to, you know, distract me from the pain that I was in. That's not a sentence I thought I would ever say, but here we are. I think I'm gonna start the reading update with Know My Name by Chanel Miller. It is phenomenal. It is five stars. I expected it to be five stars. It 100% lived up to everything I thought it was going to. Obviously there is very, very heavy content warnings for sexual assault and rape in here and discussing those, but also very heavy content warnings for discussions of mental health. If you can handle the content matter, I cannot recommend Know My Name enough. Chanel Miller is a gifted writer. I was prepared for how heavy this memoir was going to be, but I was not prepared for all of the hopeful notes within it, which were just beautiful. Even though there are quite a few moments of hopefulness in the memoir, it is still very difficult to read. There were so many times where I was so angry. I mean, obviously angry at the situation, but then also angry about how Chanel was treated in the process of everything. Yes, Chanel did receive help, but like there were so many moments where she needed more help and she really needed people to give her more information. And it's just so infuriating to think about the fact that like she was withheld information about something that happened to her. And like, I'm getting mad just thinking about it. I need to calm down. I need to calm down. It is enraging seeing how the system works. It's even more infuriating when you consider the fact that like Chanel is a positive outcome and you see how close it was to her losing her court case. You see everything that she had to go through and how difficult it was and how much it delayed her healing and delayed her life and how terrible the system a treats victims but like also just how terrible the system works and the fact that she had to go through all of this and the fact that it was so close like the fact that she was not guaranteed even with everything going on even with all the evidence she had even with her doing everything perfectly along the way it still was not a guaranteed win. She did everything that you're supposed to do and it still wasn't guaranteed even with all of the evidence that she had. And then the sentencing. I just, oh, it's making me angry. I am very angry right now. Throw the whole system out. I also really loved and appreciated how honest Chanel Miller was when writing this about her mental health and the toll it took on her and how depressed she got and how exhausted she was. The way Chanel writes about mental health rings so true. It is excruciating to read, but also 
is cathartic in a way, at least it was personally for me to read. Honestly, I know I mentioned this before, but like seriously, Chanel Miller has a gift. Let's move on to A Court of Mist and Fury now and talk about how it is the biggest shock of the year for me. It's definitely not a perfect book by any means, but like it worked for me. It just did. I don't know what to tell you. It worked for me. I was actually really shocked because after my last update for the book where I was like, yeah, it's fine so far, the plot like really got going and it was good. Like the plot was actually good. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not like the most amazing plot I've ever read, but like also it's not trying to be, you know what I mean? Like you got to set your expectations of, of this series at like the books level, you know what I'm saying? I actually was really enjoying the plot. I thought it was interesting and I actually genuinely wanted to know what was going to happen next. There definitely were a couple of moments in, I would say like the middle of the plot where things were a little bit like convenient. And I think that's like a pretty common criticism for Sarah J Maas books. But even with those moments, I still was enjoying it. I still was looking forward to finding out what was happening. I was highly entertained. I've read a lot of Sarah J Maas books at this point and like honestly they're just like popcorn. Every single time I read one of her books I am entertained the whole way through. Now I rate most of them two or three stars because to be perfectly honest like a lot of her books are like not good from an objective point of view but they're entertaining the whole way through. This was no exception exception. This was very entertaining, except I also thought it was good. Character development. I'm gonna be honest though, the ending? Fantastic. Like so good. I was reading this book and up until I'd say like 75% I was like, okay this is gonna be like a 3 or a 3.5 and literally like the last 25% of the book, oh my god. It did not go the way I thought it was going to. I was genuinely shocked with some of the things that happened. I think Sarah J Maas made some great decisions at the end of the book and I like she turned some shit around in a way that is very bad for characters but very good for the reader. I do love to see people suffer so that I can be entertained. I don't know what that says about me as a person. Maybe that's why I like Survivor so much. <laughs> I also wanted to talk about like the character Rysan. There's so many people that are like, oh my god, feminist king, like, oh. And like, honestly, I get where those people are coming from. I mean, I think Rysand is a really charismatic character. In terms of him being like a feminist icon, I would say he's very much like meeting what you should consider to be the bare minimum. So <laughs> I, I definitely don't think like Rysand is a feminist king. I just think like he's like a good partner. <laughs> Now, I also wanted to talk about a couple of things that might be considered spoilers. In my opinion, I don't think they're spoilers because of what is common knowledge about this series on the internet. I'm not going to talk about any plot points or any reveals or anything like that. I just want to talk about a couple things in the novel. I will still put like spoilers on the screen. So if you want to avoid this, just like skip ahead. Go now. Okay, if you're still here, hi. <laughs> the first thing I want to talk about is I've seen quite a few people criticize how Sarah J Mass portrays like the soulmate trope, which is common in many of her series. Sarah J Maas likes to call them mates, which I agree is like atrocious. <laughs> I hate the use of that word, but like I just sort of like 
accept it and move past that like she made a choice it's fine i personally do enjoy the soulmate trope depending on how it's done i don't know like i'm a romantic person like i'm a pisces what can i say i think soulmates are romantic so sue me the criticism isn't that sarah j mass puts the soulmate trope in her books or even that she calls it a mate even though that it whatever we're moving on we don't we don't need to go into it the criticism about it is that basically sarah j mass writes into the series that once this like bond is established both ways that the man in the partnership we can have a whole separate discussion about <laughs> the lack of inclusivity and the language of how Sarah J Mass likes to only say male and female and I mean honestly I think that she did that because she didn't want to say woman and man because like Faye are not human and she wanted a way to distinguish it. Do I think it was a poor choice? Yes, but I think she's kind of like, well, I'm committed now. I don't have a choice. Does she have a choice? Yes. Honestly, smarter people than me have already had full conversations about the lack of inclusivity in this book and how her use of male and female whatever. So we're not talking about that. What I want to talk about is that the man partner in this mate bond gets like very possessive, very, very possessive. There's a lot of criticism online about this like possessive behavior. And it is a common thread throughout multiple of her series. And I'm here to tell you that's a kink. That's a kink. Sarah J. Mass is writing that kink intentionally into the book. That is not personally my kink. Do I think Sarah J. Mass potentially is revealing things about herself? You tell me. I see this criticism and I'm like, if this were an abusive relationship that was being like, portrayed in a romantic way that was glamorizing possessiveness and abuse within a relationship and then I would have a problem with it but I genuinely just think that Sarah J Mass is writing in a domination kink into her books you know go girl I don't have a problem with it personally I just wanted to talk about that because I think there's a lot of really valid criticism surrounding Sarah J Mass and her works and I think there's a lot of things that she can work on but I just don't think that this particular thing is a valid criticism I just think it's a kink that she put in the books <laughs> the second spoilery thing I wanted to talk about was Tamlin why the hell did she character assassinate him so badly I just think it's so weird. After the first book, which I admittedly read years and years ago and gave a two star and thought was really boring. Like honestly, the A Court of Thorns and Roses is boring. You can't change my mind. It's a boring book. It's so basic, it hurts. And that's why we end up where we are in the second book. And that's totally fine. I just think after everything that happened in the first book, I think it's so weird that Sarah J Mass just like character assassinates Tamlin. She could have made so many other decisions. Everything he did in the beginning, like I was fine with that. I mean, it was bad. It was bad. It was bad. I wasn't like fine with it. It was not a good situation. It was really, really toxic. However, I do think it was an accurate portrayal of the mental health that was happening to Tamlin and the PTSD and the severe, severe anxiety that Tamlin was struggling with. So like, I think that there was a lot going on about with mental health in the beginning. So even though it was bad, it was terrible, it was toxic, that was a whole separate issue to the character assassination at the end. Why did you do that girl? Like, just send the man to therapy and leave him alone. I also like genuinely didn't think that it made sense. I could not actually see Tamlin making those decisions. So 
I thought it was like kind of bad character work. It was straight up assassination so that like the reader does not feel bad. The third thing I want to talk about is the mate bond situation and how Rysand withholds that information. I've seen a lot of criticism and honestly I am somewhere in the middle with this. I don't advocate for like withholding information. In general you should be open and honest especially with your partner. It is super super important. But at the same time I can see why Ryson might want to withhold that information considering the PTSD, the panic attacks, the nightmares so bad that you're vomiting, the massive, massive life-changing decisions that are being made, the escape from an abusive, toxic situation. There are very, very serious, major life decisions going on here, all in the midst of the fantasy plot which is another major thing that's happening that they're gonna have to deal with on top of all of the mental health problems. So I can understand wanting to allow somebody to have a chance to catch up and breathe and heal a little bit before you drop some major information that is going to shift their life again. When people are in a fragile mental and emotional state, dropping life-changing, life-altering information on them that you're not sure they're going to view as positive or negative can make everything worse. Like it can cause their mental health to further decrease. So I can understand within this set of circumstances why Ryson would make the decision to withhold that information until this character has a chance to heal. That being said though, I think what went wrong is that if Ryson was going to withhold that information until she has a chance to like heal and make some very major life decisions that she needs to make. I think that the better way to handle the situation would have been to not have her living in your house where it's just the two of you. Um, and I think also maybe not be so flirty. Obviously that is not as entertaining for the reader because, you know, the reader wants to see flirtation. We want to see banter in a romance novel. And I understand that, but I do think that, you know, that is where that situation went wrong. Those are my major criticisms of the book. That's, uh, that's really all I gotta say. Also, while we're on the subject of criticisms, I do want to just say that the smut is basic. It's real basic. And this is coming from someone who does not read very many smutty books. And even I could tell that the smut was basic. So if you're looking for like a book with like actual spice, this isn't it. It's real basic. It's real basic. And it's also like over really fast. I was like, damn, that's it? That's all it takes? That's all it takes? You're done now? I mean, okay. I guess that's the fantasy part of the novel. Forget like the wings and the magic. <laughs> Jokes aside though, I had a good time. I'm giving it four stars and I'm gonna stand behind that. The final book for this vlog is going to be This Is How You Lose the Time War. Jake and I went to Home Goods and look at this. He's so cute. <laughs> It's so dumb. It's a little vampire candy corn, but I love him. And then this is more like fall rather than Halloween theme, but I just love it. It's like a little gourd in, and I feel like a Koro could live in this little tiny house, and I just love it. It's so cute. Okay, so I have had this little like cube organizer thing for a while now and there's always been like this gap between it and the wall ignore that that's my keyblade 
So anyways, I was thinking, I was like, I need more space for books. So I was like, I'm going to take this and put it up on its side. And then I can put another cube organizer there. And then I'll, you know, double the book space over here. So I literally got a tape measure and I measured and I ordered another organizer. Ignore that. That is a spider pillow for, for Halloween. It's not allowed to go out into the house yet. Anyways, I measured and I ordered it and I forgot to take into account that this room has baseboards and it doesn't fit side by side by like less than a quarter of an inch all because of stupid baseboards i'm so sad about it hi guess what i just did did you guess refilm the entire intro for this video because i went to edit and all of the audio was completely messed up if you did you're right i'm so annoyed <laughs> This is not a real problem that I should be complaining about. Anyways, I also finished This Is How You Lose the Time War and it's so good. Oh my god. This is the best vlog in this series. Like this book is so good. Full five stars. This is one of the most beautiful books I have ever read in my entire life. The prose is so... it's just outstandingly, deliciously, decadently beautiful. I cannot get over the prose. Oh my god. I told you what this book is about. Honestly, that's all I'm gonna tell you. That's it. It's so short. That's all you need to know. Please go pick up this book. Go buy it. Like, pause the video, leave, go buy this book, and then come back and you can keep watching. Even though I just said that everyone should read this book and, like, go out and buy it, I do want to say that, like, this isn't actually a book for everybody. This is definitely one of the more niche books that I have read this year. It is one of the most unique books I have ever read in my entire life. And it is definitely weird. There is zero plot in this book. It is all vibes. It is all about the prose. It is just a weird trip that you go on with these two characters. If you are a reader that needs things explained to you, please skip this book. It is not for you. There is not a single thing in this book that is explained and there's not a single thing that makes logical sense in the entire book. Now, I want to say like the book is it's not that the book is difficult to follow. You can definitely follow what is going on and like you understand the words on the page. It's just the words on the page are not <laughs> physically possible in any way, shape or form. But like you're just going with it. You're just going with it. If you sit down and actually think about what they are doing and how they are sending these messages to each other, it does not make any sense. I I think this is like the worst <laughs> pitch I've ever given for a book. I don't think I'm making any sense right now. I think I'm rambling. But like honestly, that's all I can say about this book. Like I literally, I can't. I can't give you any more information. I can't. If you have even an inkling that this book might be for you, please, please, please give it a try. I cannot believe this vlog contained two five stars and a four star. Editing Jessica is going to put the average of those three numbers right here. That is Cindy's score for the quarterfinals. I'm so sorry that this vlog is ending on such a chaotic note. I wish I was a coherent human, but I have apparently lost that capability. So I don't know, maybe I need to go take a nap. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending some time here with me today. I really appreciate it. 
If you enjoyed your time here, please consider subscribing or leaving a comment. I would really appreciate that. Please stay safe this week. Stay hydrated. It is hot this summer and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye!